Hi there beautiful souls, Avalon here and I'm sitting at my table at the moment, you can see my green chair in the background, that's my blogging chair, usually I sit on that to do little videos but because I'm doing an unboxing today and I've just finished a client reading or an oracular session, I'm at my table, everything's set up here already so I'm just going to do that and don't be distracted by the green chair in the background. The deck that I will be unboxing today is one that I'm very excited about. Now I did say that I wouldn't be doing too many unboxings so this is one of those very few unboxings that I will continue to do because I'm super excited about this deck and today a beautiful Instagrammer by the name of, if I'm remembering this correctly, re-remembering, remembering this correctly, is Brooklyn Michelle. She tagged me in this post going, do you have this deck? And I went, yes I do, but I haven't unboxed it yet. And now you've made me really excited to unbox it. And so I'm going to do that right now. The deck is the Linstrider Tarot. The Linstrider. I know, it's been out for ages and I've had it for ages and I haven't unboxed it yet. But I do wait for feelings and things like that to occur um, to prompt me or to inspire me to unbox Ooh. Okay, I've got scissors. I'm organized. My fingers, you'll see me holding this finger out like this because it has a burn on it that got really sore. Okay, okay, okay. So the Linstrider Tarot is by Celio Thompson. Cool name, Celio. Oh, come on. It's because my damn finger sore. I can't really just go ferocious with it. Ta -da! Liberated from its cello wrap. Feel some freedom. This is the box. It's, it's a Llewellyn publication. It looks tasty. Oh, wow. Look at that. That looks so tasty. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my gosh, no. Oh my gosh. No. So if I was the creator of this box, I would have put the owl or the what I assume to be the king of cups. That owl should be on the front, really. Just, just saying. There is a cat in the back there for all you cat lovers. <laughs> Oh, spun with soft strokes of vibrant watercolour and intricate detail, the Linstrider Tarot features gentle yet evocative images that dance on the edge between magic and logic. With grace and innovation, Celio Thompson's captivating, minimalistic art will enhance your readings in powerful and profound ways. Linstriding is all about walking into two worlds, one foot in each to discover guidance, drawing inspiration from the edge while still moving forward on the fool's journey, the Rider Waite Smith based deck helps uncover the answers you seek about health, love, career, and much more. That's an actual tasty little write-up, isn't it? Linstriding. Mm. I like that little edition. It's been ages since I've unboxed a, um, a Llewellyn deck, and the inside of their packaging looks different, thankfully. Well, let's us see what we've got here. So we have Le Book. Le Book. Oh, look at that crow in the back. Is it a crow? Yes, crow. I'm digging this minimalistic watercolour stuff. That it tests you. How many pages? How many pages? The companion book has... 274 pages. It has... Astrological correspondences, numerological correspondences, associated plants as well. Um, let me just see. Little spreads in the front layout, that kind of business. Um, reading the cards. Exaltation of the Aces. Mm, that's a little interesting thing. I haven't... I... I quite like the exaltation of aces in some readings depending on how the energy flows throughout the reading and you can usually see that from the from the overall spread which is why I like to deal my cards face up rather than all face down and then flip them over it that doesn't work for me um, handling the deck but I want to just see if they've got oh here 
reversed versus negative readings. Okay, I like that. So they, he may have included. Um, he doesn't look like he's actually put in reversed meanings. He may have, he may have written it in. Oh no, he has. The lovers reverse may indicate. There you go. He's got reversed in these. That's all I wanted to know. And so this is how they're doing it now. This is how they're doing it. Cute. That's dirty. I'm digging the fool. Oh, I like this. This is sturdy. This is protective. Okay. Oh, the backing. Let's put you off to the side, my love. My little love. My new little love that will sit on my table. Oh, you're going to be a deck for Beltane, me thinks. Or even Litha. Let us see. Okay, here we go. Let's start off. Well, this is the backing. It's a beautiful blue with a with a faded grey kind of pen work, kind of like ink work, but really faded, cross hatching that kind of business. Just want to feel the cardstock. Not too bad, not too bad. It's Llewellyn cardstock. Ooh, just peeked, I peeked. I peeked at it. I'm loving the fool. Oh, I love the fool. Check this out. This is the fool. And the fool is faceless. There's not too much energy here. So the fool could be man or woman. Really, it has more of a masculine feel to it, but it's very faceless and it, it, it opens up this world of promise and adapt and tailor make oh, fucking right on look at the magician <laughs> the magician is a monkey hmm I like this I like that they went for an animal that has a high cognitive function for the magician I love this high priestess. Oh, I love this high priestess. Pomegranate? Sickle moon? Antlers. I'm digging it. Look at that. Pomegranate, sickle moon, antlers, blue. There's foliage, an arc, some kind of Sanskrit, I assume, writing. I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't tell. Ooh. Partial nudity. Excuse me, excuse me, partial nudity for the Empress. And I love it when they do this with the Empress because the Empress is supposed to be wildly feminine, exuberantly feminine, luscious, luxurious, sensual, beautifully female, voluptuous, all of those good, tasty, awesome things. Let's look at this one. Look at that. I dig it. I'm digging it. I don't like her eyes though. She looks like she's on drugs. Let me hold it up really, really close. There's something like, I've been crying. The red eye kind of business, but it might be the part of the touch. It's the Hierophant card. I always expect so much from the Hierophant card. I need to lower my expectations because I just get angry when I see things that don't, that don't do it justice. See, this artist at least has gone through the trouble of putting a bear, an empty eyed, vacant eyed bear in the background, but it still put the Pope hand and the cross keys and, I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it. 
I don't hate it entirely because it is minimalistic, so they haven't gone uber in that typical Hierophant capacity. You, you know what I'm talking about, the very Pope-esque feel that they like to weave into the deck. It's like when people get to the Hierophant, they're like, fuck, I don't know, I don't know what to do here. Let's just go and do what everybody else did, you know? I'll move on, I'll move on. The lovers, oh, oh, pears, apples, pears, apples, pears. Not sure, not sure, but it's cool. I like that. I like the inclusion of animal energy into this deck. It's not a strictly animal deck, but it's an inclusion of animal energy, which brings a sense of wildness to the deck itself. The chariot, interesting. There's not enough there. There's not enough there for there to be a for it to be a powerful card for me. There's just enough to be to honor the chariot, but there's not enough for me to be like that's an awesome chariot card. Strength. Okay, so the strength card I quite like. There is quite enough there for that to be a beautiful, soft, minimalistic, but still very powerful strength card. The Hermit. See, there's enough here with the Hermit. And see, they've included a bear. Although I do believe it's a polar bear and a half a skull. But the lan lantern is still there. And it's got just enough there for me. Just enough. The Wheel of Fortune is kick-ass. I love this Wheel of Fortune. It's beautiful. death. This has definitely got something to it. Oh my gosh. There's got so, there's a lot, there's, mm, it's got me tongue tied. Beautiful. Le Devil. It's interesting. I accept. This is interesting, the tower. It's not quite cracked and falling, but people are jumping from it and there's still the bolt of lightning in the background anyway. Not sure how I feel about that. The star is quite beautiful despite those vacant eyes. I don't like you. I'm not a fan of you. I'm not a fan of you. This is the world card. Ace of Wands. We have a fox. I like it. I dig it. I like fox energy with fire. I do like it. Oh, five wands. I just like this for so many reasons. Look at that. That is the fervor wins. Seven of wands. The Eight of Wands. I like the Eight of Wands. I like all the Eights. I like to look at all the Eights in the Tarot. Nine of Wands is quite, it's quite cool. It's quite cool. <laughs> I like that. I dig it. It's an anthropomorphized, I want to say, fox. Quite nice. Page of Wands, Partial Nudity Alert. Ooh, there's dragon energy in this one. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm shifting around in my seat because a mosquito has happened to have bitten the very sole of my foot. Which, as you know, is difficult to itch. We shall move on, though. We shall move on. Ooh, I dig the Knight of Wands. Look at that.
Ooh, queen. King of Wands. Mmm, I like it. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Ace of Cups. We have our cats in the Ace of Cups. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. I like this one very much. It rings to like this opium den feel. <laughs> I don't know why. That's how I feel about it. Although it, the concept of the opium den and the Four of Cups, you know, <laughs> does have a little something something there. Five of Cups. I don't love this vacant eye business, but you know what? I can see where he's going with it, so. Five of Cups. Seven of Cups. That splash of magenta is everything. Eight of Cups. Oh, I like this. Simple, but there is that tiny little moon in the background. Very nice, very nice, very, very nice. Ten of Cups. Love this. This flourishes of pink. The colour really speaks as part of the story. I noticed the tone and the and the and the quality of colour used is very appropriate. Feels very appropriate to me. Page of Cups. Queen of Cups is on the front of the box, as we see here. That's the Queen of Cups. Jellyfish and goldfish. Starfish and shell. So if you're an oceanic lover, that one's going to ring true to all the mermaids out there. And mermen. King of Cups. This is nice. It's like a... I don't know if that's a Chinese fighting fish. Feels The, the looseness of the fins feels very Chinese fighting fish. Ace of Swords. I dig the Ace of Swords being like this eagle. I like it. Three of Swords. Oh. I'm just going to hold that there so we can both just share this moment. Look at that. Once you've seen that. Four of Swords. Very nice. Very nice. Sleeping Lion. I like that. Very restful state. Appropriate. Appropriate. Five of Swords. Mm. I don't mind it. It's a fully black and white card. I don't mind it. Six of Swords, we have the traditional Rider Waite Smith River or Water Crossing via boat. And the tone again really adds to the to the story. Seven of Swords. Not sure. Not sure about the Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. Interesting. I like it. I quite like it. Ten of Swords. Oh, shit. Mm. If you are ultra sensitive to animal brutality and things of that nature, I would suggest looking away.
I really like it. Not in a sadistic way, I just love where they've gone with it, the choice. Bitty bitty nice. Knight of Swords. These knights are really interesting, the way that the knights have been done. I'm irking about the position of the sphere. I would have liked it down a bit more. Or bleeding. Or, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. King of Swords. Very icy. Very feathery. It has a coldness to it. A chill. A eh? sharp edge. It's very good. So tasty. Mm. It's very tasty. Ace of Pentacles. Oh, really? Okay. I like lilies, so that's fine. Bunnies, I don't mind. Two of Pentacles. The face of this dude is just priceless. Check it. I'm juggling life and balancing contracts and blah 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 blah. It feels very blah 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 haphazard. Three of Pentacles is awesome source. That was on the box. There's the crew. Oh, really? I don't like this. The Five of Pentacles just doesn't say enough. Oh, I believe, are they crutches? It doesn't tell enough of a story. It doesn't quite tell enough of the story. The Six of Pentacles, on the other hand, tells a lot about the story. Isn't that cool? So cool. Eight of Pentacles. I've got a little bit more feeling in the eyes here. A little bit more feeling. Not a heap more feeling, but a little bit. Oh, the Nine of Pentacles with the grapes and the presence of the owl. That's a bit better. of pentacles. Nudity alert. Saucy and minxy. I like it. Oh, here we have another sphere for the knight of pentacles. I like the horse. I'll bring it up close so you can see the sphere. There you go. There's the detail. And then the King of Pentacles is that awesome owl. No wonder I loved that owl. It's a beautiful representation. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole deck. With exception of a few cards that I'm just playing with. So the overall feeling is pretty good. It's very light, very airy. So this might be more litha. It might be a more litha oriented deck. Let's see how we go with that. Beltane's coming in. I'm not feeling a tremendous push to work with this one right just yet. Let's put you back in your little tuck box. But the deck does look impressive. It actually does get me thinking. It gets the, the creative juices flowing a little bit. And you sometimes have to wonder why the artist has gone with some of the choices that he or she went for. Oh gosh, never the mind. Um, but I am not disappointed with this deck. In fact, I'm more intrigued. I'd like to see how it reads, but I feel like it doesn't belong on my reading space right now. I've got too much of a different energy going on here, but um, I will get there. I will absolutely get, oh, come on, dude. Just fit into the box. Just need you to 
put into the box, yeah? Sorry, you don't need to struggle with me, um, but I thought that I'd continue to talk just for a little bit because I am quite impressed with this and the cardstock is Llewellyn, it's not too bad. I'm curious to see sort of what kind of a reading it does. I'm now looking at the cover and I do like the jellyfish inclusion um, in the Queen of Cups. I like the way that the court has been done with the exception maybe of the knights. The knights and those little sphered images, I don't know, I don't know. The, the images inside the spheres themselves are very intricately done and amazing. There's a, 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 there seems to be um, a higher level of detail added to the knights than the, the rest of the court. Um, but I do like the mix of animal and human, and I really do like the entire way that the deck has been laid out. Don't like the Hierophant card, unfortunately. It's not the worst Hierophant card in the world, but it's not the best either. So, um, yes, so that was the Lindstrider Tarot. Exciting! I sincerely hope that you guys have liked this one. Any questions, just let me know. Bye!